Hello friends! Today for our mythology portion of storytelling, we're going to be going to Greece. We're going to talk a little bit about Medusa, about the two main variations of her myth, and some social commentary type thoughts about the myth and how it's been portrayed throughout history. Let's get into it. So as far as I can tell, there are two main you could say branches of the story of Medusa. There are a handful of things in common, such as the physical characteristics and her mythological powers, but the, how she came to be what she is varies depending on whether you are talking about the Greek version of the tale or that which predates them. So if we're looking at the oldest version of the story, the version that I first encountered as a teenager in high school when we were learning about Greek mythology, Medusa was a Gorgon, one of three sisters, and she was, unfortunately, the only one who was mortal. Her two sisters were immortal. So when Perseus was sent on his quest by Athena to... well, that's another long story, so we'll just talk about his little portion of it there. Uh, he needed some way to kill a titan. Well, Medusa, even without her body, her head would still have the power to turn things to stone. So Athena gave Perseus a bunch of magical gifts to enable her to cut off Medusa's head and then carry it with him as a tool to then kill a titan that was threatening a city. That is a terrible summation, but there it is. So that's the first version where you really know absolutely nothing about her other than she was born as a Gorgon, she had two sisters, she's the only one who's mortal, and she really got the short end of the stick. The second version that, from what I can tell, is a later version of this myth, it's difficult to tell when you're looking at translations and historical sites of which came first, particularly when different... Oh, how do I, how do I phrase this delicately? Different archaeological societies throughout history chose to popularize one or another version of the story because they did not like what was told in one version or another. So I have not found the full explanation of why there's the two versions or when they got popularized. It's just from what I have seen, the second version got popularized later, which is where Medusa was a beautiful woman. She was born a human. She was a priestess to Athena. And unfortunately, as is true in many of the Greek myths, Beautiful women were taken advantage of by the gods. She was beautiful enough that she caught the attention of Poseidon. Poseidon then chased her into the temple where he raped her. As punishment, Athena transformed her into a gorgon, a snake-haired woman who then had the power to turn those who looked upon her to stone, who then Perseus came cut off her head, and the story continued as in the previous version. So Medusa ends up having this very painful story. Both versions. The later one is worse. But there's some interesting notes from a sociological, sociological standpoint. For example, recent archaeological discoveries have found that the face of Medusa was put on women's shelters in Greece in Rome. Clearly, there was a different feeling about her throughout history. Why would she be put as a protective figure on women's shelters? If there were not other stories about her that have been lost to us where she was a protector of women. Just from the stories that we do have, she protected herself. Throughout history, the powerful have always despised those who defend themselves. They have despised those who stand up for themselves. 
in the time period that these stories come to us from, women did not have a lot of political power. They did not have a lot of options. Being a priestess in a major temple would have put a woman in a position of a lot of authority over a community. But she would still have been limited by not being as strong physically as the men around her. Many people view what was done to her by Athena as a curse. I view it more as a mixed blessing. Her beauty is what caused Poseidon to pursue her. Athena made her, in a conventional sense, less beautiful, but also gave her the ability to protect herself from ever being harmed in that way again. I'm beginning to realize I probably should have scripted this instead of just talked my way through it, but that's okay. In the modern era, I've seen a lot more commentary being very gentle towards Medusa, being much more compassionate, much more in line with her symbol as a protector of women. Part of that has to do with the more egalitarian nature of modern society, but I think part of that also just has to do with the willingness and the desire for empathy. Historically, people have not had empathy for others. Anyone who was outside of the in-group was an enemy. I think we are exceptionally blessed to live in a time where just because someone is part of a different group than us, that does not mean they are an enemy. It just means they're different. So here's my really rambling take on Medusa, the two variations of her myth. As a quick reminder, check out the links in the description. There's a link to my Discord, to my personal website, and also to my Buy Me A Coffee page. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.